Federal constituency at the House of Representatives, Honorable Amo Bioga, who sponsored the bill for the creation of a TT state as the additional state to bring the Southeast geopolitical zone at par with other zones, has given more insight on the proposal. It's the, the ones that will join there, the communities and local governments that are expected to be part of the new state include in Abia State, you have Isu Kwato and Umun Nochi. And of course, uh, in Imo, you have. Uh, Okigwe and Onuimo, local government areas. Orumba North and South from Anambra. Ivo and the Hoza local government areas from Eboi. And Oji River, Ogu, and Anere from Enugu State. It cuts across all the existing five states so that no state is so changed. That's how he put it. Now, in the same claim made by Representative E. King Aguchinyere when he submitted his own proposal for the creation of all the states, we have also had the Anioma proposal, which is the brainchild of Senator Ned Moko. Of course, you also heard that Senator Kezia is also making a call for the creation of Adada State. Some people consider it one of the oldest state agitation proposals within the Southeast. Now, has the call for the creation of additional states in the Southeast become an all commerce jamboree, or will the current cacophony of agitations give the Southeast any advantage? This is the Eastern Eye. I am Alex Obodo. Welcome to the Eastern Eye here on Afia TV, a program that aids raise the political, social, and economic developments around us. The agitation for state creation in Nigeria <coughs> has become a very political, ethnic, and resource sensitive subject with various cultural or interest zones hustling for relevance with talks about equity, fairness, and justice as the icings of the cake. But is President Balatinubu led government disposed to creating any more states with the current situation of the country? Tonight on the program, I'm joined by Barristan Nadiume of Fokansi. He is a constitutional lawyer and head of the Fokansi Chambers. He's joined tonight by Comrade Ken of former veteran journalist and former vice president, Southeast Zone of the Nigerian Union of Journalists. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me on the Eastern Eye tonight. I'll, I'll start the discussion with you, uh, yeah. Barrister Nadimo of Fokansi. We've now had, I think, about four calls for the creation of a state in the Southeast because Ned Woko's call, he said also to make Southeast have uh, states that are equal to the number of others, at least the common path. So let's know what your thoughts are when you look at this calls, and of course with the latest uh, voice of Okeza okay uh, coming to the board uh, because I, I've, I've been asking where is the other other call and finally we heard it isn't it uh, uh, Barrister of Okeza okay. no surprises that Adada has joined the fray uh, well Alex you see I like the use of the adjective you use in your intro <laughs> there is a cacophony of voices clamoring for the creation of states um, <clears throat> you see, there's nothing wrong with state creation, but the problem is, or the question is, these voices that are, you know, rising here and there, asking for state creation, is it just meant to fulfill all righteousness, or are they actually out to do the needful in terms of state creation? Because state creation under a civilian dispensation is not a tea party. It is not just something you wake up in national assembly and say, I want another state, or I want a low state, or I want a titty state. You have to go beyond that. Even before you open your mouth in the national assembly to say you want this social state to be created, you must have done a very beautiful homework within the areas. At least the local government chairman, where there are no chairmen, the HPMs, you must have brought them, you know, into the know of what you are planning. Because they are the ones that reach the grassroots. Before you talk about the referendum on the plebiscite, which you are going to conduct in the state, before you talk about the uh, involvement of the state assemblies in the various states that will cut out some people from their state to join the new states. The truth of the matter is, 
From independence, no civilian government has ever created states. I stand to be corrected. Apart from the regional government created to us by the British, the Civil War came in the nick of the well, Civil War, 1967. Well, well, there could just have been one exception. Uh, when you had... Midwest. The, Midwest. That, that, that was exactly. So yeah. sorry, so sorry. Yeah. Yes, I think the Midwest was the only exception. Now, But then it was, it was a region, so it has to be said. Exactly, exact, but it was still a little yes. you know, move, movement away from the regions. So that, I think that Midwest was an exception. So that is the nick of the Civil War. Go on, created about three, 12 states. Just, you know, to short of, short change the quest for the actualization of the Republic of Biafra by the Ojuku administration then. And subsequently, there has never been what the military just go into their bedroom, call the attorney general, they chung out one decree, the next day it is announced and the state is created with military fiat. Nobody questions that. That has ever been, apart from many words, that has ever been how all other states have been created in Nigeria. <clears throat> but if uh, Gochinere is actually serious about what he's talking about or network or uh, is there, I think they could have started from their own base first. It's all like doing the last thing first. Then we will come, okay, we'll say, no problem, we'll have had your motion. We'll look at it. They will reply to a session on uh, states or whatever they call their own subcommittees. What are they going to do? Practically nothing. Because they, that committee cannot even come to the states. So it is for the representative to carry out his homework earlier before coming to the National Assembly. Unless they want to do it like a jamboree is something you want to do to please people. Some people not say you have been there, sitting down idle, even to say I move in terms of motion paper. Nobody has ever said it. So there's oh there are one person talking. That is not representation. Every we need states. Accepted, we need states. At least if for nothing, for the new employment it will create, for the new allocation formula it will create, and for the reaching of the grassroots that that will enhance, we need states. But nonetheless, also, you also know states also cultivate a name it. It is a, it's a recipe for inter-state struggles. Unnecessary enemies, people who have been brothers, all of a sudden, you now say, I have more Imo state, mm -hmm. I have more Alhambra state. The crisis has to be brilliant. Remember when we were all Alhambra state before Imo state was uh, created? Remember Imo, the Alhambra state saying, we want to go. Now, when they were created, the Oriental brothers have to sing a song. Alhambra and Imo both, both fully, both fully. So, the people who are negotiating, what they happened? So what I'm saying is I that... it was East Central State. Uh, sorry, it was East, yes, East, yeah, East Central State. State. So you find out that all these agitations for states breeze, you know, unnecessary kind of, you know, complex measurement. You know, they have been there for it. They say, you are behaving like an airboy man. These things are not necessary. Why Malema is busy trying to talk that we have to open the oil laws in Africa. So every country will become, Africa will become one. We are clamoring for states here so that to keep on creating more enemies for ourselves. <laughs> I don't think state creation is even the prime thing that this our representatives should be talking about now. Let them address the marginalization of the Southeast. It is very glaring, it is very obvious. And the ones we might, okay, the states we are talking about, we are in Enugu State, for instance. Are we at par with ourselves? Are we happy with the way we are? Are we working to make sure everybody in any state is happy? Even with the enemy state. I was sad to be in our work this afternoon. I saw a host of policemen and soldiers inside the market. I wonder what's going on. They say NAPDAC uh, wanted to lock, lock up shops of some people in our work. And for one week now, people who sell uh, beverages, alcoholic and uh, now light spirits, that they are no more opening their shops. A lot of shops are locked up. Now, you can, you can also see the ambitious program of our governor, uh, the bus terminals he has been craving to build, and the reactions of the people, and how many people are thrown out of employment. Such things are things one could even set the example with one in Gariki.
Then the people in uh, Holy Ghost, ah, this thing in Gang is so beautiful. Please come and be in our own. They will not be begging the government to come. I'm not to demolish everywhere at the same time. I'm not to take off in any way. So you see, what I'm saying is that what gain are we going to get from the states we want to create? Is it a clamor to get more states, to create an enmity among ourselves, and to keep on further dividing ourselves on geopolitical, uh, 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 cultural uh, threats? So okay. I, I like what they, are, what they say they are doing, but let them go and do the first thing first. All right. Anybody's in favor of So you have to start from <laughs> the joint. That, that's all right. <laughs> Interesting way to put it. All right. Uh, Comrade Ken of former, looking at what has happened, and this was the issue that was raised as soon as Ikenga Gochinya represented. I think that was the first proposal that came. Okay. And then you had a uh, communique from here and there, from Imo from Anambra, there were interest groups that said that they don't, we don't want to have anything to do with the Olo state, as it were. Whatever it is you want to do, we don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're just playing by putting our names there. Could this have happened? At least if you want to have a, a creation of state proposal, is it out of place for those that have been elected to represent people? Is it out of place for them to call a town hall meeting and discuss this before putting together a write-up and lumping communities they haven't spoken to about being in a state with them. Uh, thank you very much. Um, let me lay the background. Um, my co-discussant has given a historical background. But I want to say that um, because our people are not uh, politically savvy, people of this region, most people don't know the benefit of having a state. I will see it as just another mundane struggle for... No. If you talk about how to correct injustices, how to correct marginalization, how to correct um, inequity, state creation is at the, at the core of it. If you don't talk about additional state for South then you have no support. That means you don't know the areas that the South is being marginalized. Because the military, like uh, we said, created the states and local governments. But they, do, they did so to favor their region. Kano State was, um, I mean, Jigawa State was created out of Kano. But Kano State has 44 local governments. The Jigawa has uh, 36 local governments. Jigawa and Kano, maybe Kaduna, the local governments there are enough to cover the whole of Southeast. I remember the revenue allocation and sharing is based on this, on this number of local governments. The same thing with states. During the census, if you have more states and more local governments, there will be more penetration by the numerators. You understand my point? To be able to count people. During the last one in 1996, Remember that most local governments in South were not counted, even. Some had to go to tribunal, census tribunal. And they got, like a boy went to census tribunal. And they got judgment that most of their local governments were not even counted. The same thing with the election. How many numbers do you produce? Because during the registration, you are only registered to five states or a few local governments. So there are so many things, so many benefits, so many gains if you have equal number of states, like other regions. Why do, why do they have six and only have five? And South, uh, Northwest has seven. So we are losing a lot. Revenue, representation, because they're going to have three senators again from Southeast. They're going to have at least six House of Rep members. They're going to have 24 uh, House of Assembly members. And you tell me that there's no benefit in us. They're going to have concentrated development in the areas that we carved out. So first of all, I want to say that we have a lot of benefits. Others that have six and the one that has seven, they, they don't have two heads. Why should we have the least? That is one. Now, each time there is a proposal for creation of states, it's always attended by a lot of cacophony of voices. But it's understandable, we are in democracy. It's always about interest. Even politics is about enlightened self-interest. And so, but the thing is that 
the the other Nigerians have not been helpful. Yes, it, it is true that uh, the Constitution, 1999 Constitution, as amended, made fake race very, very difficult, a procedure. But it, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. We almost came to state creation during the, the um, Obasanjo 2007 constitutional amendment, which was aborted because of insertion of uh, third term, extension of term. Already, there was state creation that it, was, that it would have been created, even though that, that effort was thrown away with uh, the third term virus. So it, it's possible. Any any. President that has the political will that is determined to give the extra state will do so. It's a question of lobbying the National Assembly, lobbying other governors. Okay, did, did anybody imagine that you could have 50 House of Rep members who signed on to write a letter to President Tinubu that now the candidate should be released? You see people from Midugri, Sokoto, Kasina, from different parts of this country. Agree with one voice that let's release this man as a way of tackling insecurity in Southeast. That means it is possible when you lobby and reach out to people for for a good cause. And so now with the first proposal by uh, obviously he didn't do due diligence. He didn't um, consult very well. Because if you look at the Urumba North, Urumba South, he included. Uh, here, here on the side, that is the uh, Epusigo. The, the House of Rep members there rejected it because they were not even consulted. It appears that he was the only architect of that. And the proposal, uh, uh, he said, Orlo, and his, that is his constituency. And although we have about almost nine local governments, which means it's not going to be proportional uh, if it is created. So, he didn't do uh, enough consultation. Then, because of that, he now see other the people uh, and lawmakers also sending their because they are, they are constant to say, ah, are you there sleeping and then look at this one. So now you have a proposal for um, Anyoma from Senator. Yeah, no. You have the proposal for ATT state by, I think, uh, led by Olga, uh, but other House from of Rep members, like uh, the one from uh, the, the House of uh, House of Rep representing Ogu, uh, I mean, uh, Ogu, Aniri, yeah. Ojiriba, yeah. he signed into it. The one representing Ivo, uh, 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 signed on to it. The one representing Sukwato and all, they signed on, the one representing Urumba South, Urumba North. You see, there's a consensus. And this is not the first proposal. I remember that even during that uh, Obasanjo era, when Ayan Paras was, uh, um, I think, uh, a senior president, there was such a proposal. There was a delegation led by um, Commodore uh, Emilio Ogogo, former military governor of uh, Imo State, and other leaders from that area. They also went to National Assembly to lobby for, uh, initially they were saying equity, but later they had to convert it to Igbo language to say a city state. Then, of course, you have uh, Adada, proposal for Adada by Senator Okezia. That one has also been long in, in the agitation. You also have uh, Anyoma, which has also been long, which will also be good if it is possible that Anyoma will be made part of Southeast uh, geopolitical zone. Yeah. That would be good too. That, that's the proposal that Ned Woko is pushing. Yeah. But he's getting a pushback from even from Anyoma. No, that naturally. The naturally. The groups, they naturally. Say they, they don't know what he's talking about. Like I say, about. It is, it is, that is why it is democracy. There's no way you are going to have 100% agreement in anything. It's not possible. But that is why it, the procedure also recognizes the need for plebiscite or or whatever, to aggregate the opinion of people who agree. And when the majority say they want it, it goes. So now, I'm not worried about the number of proposals. And each of them have passed first reading. So let, let even the National Assembly can decide which one they, to create. For me, anyone that is created is okay by me. 
So long as we have that equality, so long as we are, we are not being short, we are not being shortchanged in number of local government in revenue allocation in development. I mean, we say no credit that they, but they are viable. Look at go to Ebony. You will know why state creation is good. Ebony is almost overtaking the older states in terms of development. If you have focused leaders, visionary leaders, and you give them resources to manage, and they are able to manage it well. It will lead to development, lead to creation of more employment. So, can you imagine if you create a TT state, that area that is abandoned, almost abandoned by every government in their states? You will see a lot of development. It will be a center of development. People will create their employment, there will be revenue, there will be you know, infrastructure. Yeah. Will, be, will spring up, whether you like it or not. All right. Development of resources. You know, we'll, we'll, so we'll, we'll look at the it is for the National yeah. Assembly to do that, yeah. whereby they fail to do that. It is for the president to also help with the political will. You can organize uh, a referendum, let the people vote, whichever one that wins. For me, anyone goes. Okay, great. We'll take a break here on the Eastern Eye. When we return, we'll find out exactly what needs to be done for at least one state to emerge from all those proposals. Uh, our, the reps and even senators are making at the National Assembly. Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Eastern I here on IFR TV. It's a program that X raised the political, social, and economic developments around us. My name is Alex Obodo. My guests are here with me, uh, Barista Nadume of Fokansi. <coughs> the talk about creation of state and there's one fundamental question that i asked and why is it that those at the national assembly don't care that they don't see it fit to come back and have that conversation with the people before they submit that bill i, I, I don't know maybe I, I, i'm at a loss but it hasn't been reported at least for those in any the person that signed was there a town hall meeting held in the among the local governments is is there a rep of course, uh, Senator Kerr is there, represents Enugu uh, um, North Senator Zone. They've had a long uh, agitation for creation of state. That's very understandable. So isn't it necessary, really, to consult your constituents before submitting this? Or is it just an affair for people who are in Abuja? Whatever they submit, because we need a state in the southeast, it should be accepted. Shouldn't there be some conversation at the lower level? No, you see, a journey of one million miles starts with a step, and the constitutional creation, I mean, uh, state creation, has a constitutional procedure as stipulated, I think, under section 8 sub 1 of the 1999 constitution. First of all, <clears throat> it has to be through an act of the National Assembly, and then on approval by two thirds majority of the houses of assembly that are likely to be affected, then that House of Assembly, those states House of Assembly that are going to be affected, must have to get the like the one we are talking about, the referendum or the place reside from the people who actually want to belong to this <coughs> that very state. So this procedure, like my friend here said, is a it is possible. It's not an impossible process. It's a possible process if anybody is committed to it with the political will. But then the question is there again. You might be from Kano West. They ask you now, what is the demographic number of people living in the Kano West who are of voting power, at least from age 18 and above? You don't know. The local government doesn't have such statistics. The National Bureau of Statistics doesn't even have it. The population, National Population Commission doesn't also have it. How then do you now print? Because referendum is not going to be something you carry a microphone as a journalist and walk in this as a do you want it to say that? I say, no, I don't want it's not a, It's not a public opinion. You don't have to give people paper. Yeah, okay. but it, it, it's a sort of opinion. It's a sort of opinion now. If, if, if you're going to vote, I'm coming. Are you going to, I'm going to use the INEC voters register? Yes, yeah, obviously, because if, so if it's going to be a plebiscite, yes. it should be administered by INEC. Now, see, if you are going to use INEC voters register, that means that you have to open up the voter registration again because they are one set of people who have just clocked 18 and they were people who were not registered during the previous registration. God is one now because it's going to be a narrow kind of it's no more a national issue. So maybe it is going to concentrate in two or three regions. 
And uh, if you follow the process and get what you want, I think uh, the issue of uh, the people getting involved ordinarily should have been where if I were in the National Assembly, where I could have started. Like people were protesting, they were not told, and social media content creators have already gone mm -hmm. on social media telling people, well, if you say you don't want to marry anybody from Imo, you in know, Urumba, you are not in the uh, state, to, <laughs> so make sure that. <laughs> so you see, a lot of people now, but they still fear. Uh, and some people say, no, we don't want to be in that kind of state. So what uh, Ned, uh, Gochinia, uh, because the other man's name, and uh, okay, Ezea, okay, Ezea. Oga. Oga, what they could have done is, first of all, have the town hall with their people, get their, let the people get their back, let the connect of various communities that they, you know, Ada Ada has been a long standing, but I still remember so this. Be, because it looks like that the, theirs is the one that wouldn't need them. Uh, yes. That because they already, they have an agitation. Yeah, that's, and they have a documented agitation. Correct. That's where I'm going. I think in 2007, I think when I invited for the local government, I by the local government. I recall that the day we were being either approved or rejected by the Salva administration was the day they had the other other state creation rally at Opara Square. Square. It was a very humongous uh, occasion. So I think that other has been a very long time agitation. So and they must have had a lot of things in place. And their own, I don't think there's anybody that want to coerce who doesn't want to be there. All of them have been yeah. singing with one voice. Cultural homogeneity. Yes, yeah. that homogeneity is there. And that of Adama, like uh, uh, journalist said, I think that one is that people are, you know, singing this current tune across the Niger. Doesn't mean that the Igbo speaking Deltans across the Niger will not like to be part of the Anyama state. Certainly they will, because they also form part of Ohanese and Igbo. They have already held it on her I think they have held it on her yes. uh, Professor Rapp, Rapp, Rapp will watch it. Fine. So, the next president general will also go to River State. Well, they can see. So, you find out that those people who are of that extraction, Igbo extraction, who want to be in that Anioma state, there will be more in number. The Delta Abbots, who feel that uh, they, 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 they want to disassociate themselves from their Igbo roots. And they want to trace their roots back to Benin. Even where they advertise them, we don't know you people. They want to want to attack themselves to Benin. So those people might be singing these color tunes. No doubt about that. Because it, I, there was one of these uh, religious uh, this thing I, out and I watched. Somebody was being asked, where are you from? He said, he's from Eka. He said, where is Eka? He said, it's Delta. What is he said, he said, are you, are you Igbo? He said, no. He said, what are you? He said, uh, no, he said, what are you? He said, he's from South South. He said, never mind, what is your name? He said, his name, I think he said, name, two women. What, how do you people say, come, in your language? He said, yeah. How do you say, go? He said, Gaba. Now, how many market days do you have? He said, I can't put all the apple. So the man answered, the, 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 uh, what we call the man of God, that was, so I don't know to so blame the small boy. Why shouldn't I blame him? Because, the the Igbo dominance of the eastern region of Nigeria, you know, got broken first by Go on by the creation of states in 1967, two by the defeat of the the, the Biafran mm -hmm. agitation in 1970. If the Abiyadu was not defeated, people would be buying visa to come and join in that republic. So, but uh, like the English adage like, says. Uh, failure is an orphan, but success has a thousand friends. So I don't blame this one for He will tell you from South South. They, the one, they are, they are a couple living in my house in the village. In South of America, I came one day, she was trying to accept on my plan, she was trying to charge her phone. So they were speaking Igbo. So I called her and said, Nekedu. She said, No, the woman. Are you from where? Say, I'm from South South. Ah, but in that she wasn't Abraham or Ibu. She is Ibu to tell me Abraham or Ibu. So the thing so 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 that made me, so that's that they are saying, look at that couple from a different eye, you know. So, but what I'm trying to say is that 
These people, a lot of people, like he said, no time everybody will clap for you and say, whatever you are saying, we'll take it wholesale. They have turned it from the right way by making it public at the National Assembly. The National Assembly has to pass their law, set up their own committee, all right? And then and this committee, committee and then now, they will now come back and they exactly. ask the people. They, they come, but mm -hmm. they could have done those ones so that it will be a smooth sail mm -hmm. when people come. Let it not be like let me just land now. Let it not just be like when they were asking local governments whether they want to be autonomous. Mm -hmm. They didn't do any homework with the local government. The governors mm -hmm. had the local government in their sure. ties. So immediately they think came to the House of Assembly. They said no. Them. We want to attach ourselves to the government. Governor, you can see the embarrassment. Somebody wants to give you freedom. You say you don't want the freedom. Mm. So, but that is lack of homework. So if people have done their homework, then it could be a smooth say when the National Assembly comes down to do whatever place they are going to conduct. Great. Uh, Comrade Kerno, former, why is it hard for those representing different sections of this country in the National Assembly, why is it hard for them to organize town hall meetings? Is it too expensive that they can't organize it for something as serious as state creation? No, I, I see. I'm... Even you if you to have a normal meeting, even if you don't call it down. Let, let, let us not misunderstand this thing. They are not uh, reinventing, the, I mean, they are not uh, creating something new. These are long standing agitations. I, I gave you an example that PGT was long standing. There are leaders that led the agitation, even to the National Assembly. So it's already there. It's a question of picking the documents, dust it, and submit. The same thing with Adada. Uh, uh, the same thing with Daniel. So it's not something new. The people know. But it's at the stage of, and while you are doing something, if you go to start holding town hall meeting, you really start creating some repos already <laughs> that we really begin to, uh, these little, little agitations. Uh, but it is when it gets to the level of public hearing or a referendum that you now know those who want to join or those who don't want to join. So I don't think that, the only area I'm talking about uh, consultation that be not being well done is not about uh, communities. Communities are already aware. The area I'm talking about is like if Ikenga uh, 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 wanted to do that, or if the Igbo representatives in the National Assembly wanted to go for, you know, additional state, it's also something that you should have consulted a body like Ohanes and Igbo, which okay. oversees. And then they should consult the governors, the Igbo governors, together with the Hanes and the Igbo. But quite sincerely, they may not reach sorry, a consensus. But at least but, they can limit it to but, two or but three. Pardon me that I'm Before they forward the. I mean, if you are a governor presently in the southeast, <laughs> and suddenly you realize that the territory you are currently governing will be slashed into two. Would you be uh, accepting that? Is it, is it that why earlier... No, no, no. I want mean, no, no, to answer you. That's why I made an earlier comment. Mm. That our people are not politically savvy. If you go to the North and make that proposal, they will, have, they will accept it with open hands. Because they know the benefits. What are you talking about? Which government will not like it? Mm. It means more resources. Uh, they look at the IGR. Do you know that... Do you know that... How many of them are directing energy? Do you know that... South East has lost more than two trillion naira that we could have gotten from federal allocation that we are missing because we don't have extra one thing. So which, which, there is no adult in South East, there is no adult evil person that that uh, suck the breast of the mother that would be against state creation because. Except you don't, you don't, you're not a grown up person. You don't know. So, so typically now, because we will have about seven, six minutes to go. So the point is where is the most suitable location for the new <laughs> state in the southeast. I'll start with you because you just spoke. Uh, so that you, I know, I'll, 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 my, I'll, my position is this. Instead of us to quarrel and quarrel and throw it away, the opportunity away, let us prepare our minds to accept anyone that is uh, thrown to us. All of them are good. If you want to say, oh, because this one is the oldest, it's not going to be based on it's going to be based on viability, it's going to be based on equity, it's going to be based on which one would benefit the entire Igbo more. For instance, if you create that data, you're only talking about one senatorial zone in any good state. No other state is involved. If you talk about the Anyama, you're only talking about one senatorial zone in the other state. No other state is the only way we gain from there is that if it will be excised and made, be made part of Southeast, you are some point. 
But, 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 but if you look at it, I'm taking the one, one after mm. the other. Okay. If you talk about uh, Olo, now Olo will, ha will be predominant because they have about nine, uh, nine local governments. They will be too big, bigger than the others. That's why the fear is there. The people from Anambra is disproportionate. Is disproportionate. Then if you talk about the TT, that is the most proportionate. And that is the only one proposal that the House of Rep members representing the various states endorsed. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the House <coughs> of Rep members representing an area of Woji River, in Jinyano, we endorsed it. The House of uh, Representative members representing uh, Ohanivo, uh, Ohanivo, Ivo, endorsed it. Uh, one, um, I forgot his name, he endorsed it. The one representing Umunochi and all that in Abia. They endorsed it. They were very really more. So is that the one that is more equitable, if you ask me? But for me, it doesn't mean that it's something that is cast in stone. Whichever one that they arrived at, there was even the time I was saying, why not pick religious leaders, bishops, and you know, from the service? Let them go into a conclave and come and give us one. Let us <laughs> accept it. All right. Uh, no, uh, 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 do we need a conclave no, to come uh, up with a lucky deep? A lucky deep. No, Let's take anyone. Conclave we, or lucky deep? As long get one. Uh, no, maybe, maybe I should ask you is it conclave, lucky deep, or should we or do. Or, should, or should we do. Uh, <laughs> or referendum. Uh, a roll of the dice. A referendum. Uh, there are many ways to settle it. I think I buy Ken's idea about whichever one comes. But you also have to check the spread. The spread and the balancing, or whichever one you are going to get. <clears throat> Even in law, when you file an action and are asking for damages, you can ask court to tell you to tell the defendant to pay you one billion. It is for the court to, to say, okay, okay, you deserve ten thousand or you deserve twenty thousand based on the evidence. So let's have all the evidence of these accusations on the table. I know which one will benefit. Sincerely, if we were, they are giving us one state to make it par with maybe other zones. I will say that every other person brings his own on the table. And like he also rightly said, and you said too, the religious leaders, the Ohanes and the Igbo, they will draw their committees. All these Igbo social cultural groups draw their delegates or their committees that will go and study one. Then map out the advantage of each and every one of the four states proposed and send it to the National Assembly. The people there, if they have grey matters in their head, they will see another one. proposal from Abba. Yeah, they will see which one, which one is better. They will see another one. Uh, Just by next week. But I don't know. That, that, that's my hunch. Yes, I said it. <laughs> if it's going to be like the Igbo quest, when you had a slot of the Senate president, almost five people, one will stay for two months, they will pitch him. If it's going to be like that, then I say we're going to the complaint. And then bond the wherever it's it right to. to. <laughs> we'll that one. So that's why I look at it. All right, so I mean, it's been always an ongoing conversation because we never know what will pop up at the National Assembly yeah. tomorrow. Maybe just like uh, Comrade of Over said, uh, maybe ABA will come up with their own agitation. <laughs> so we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Very many thanks, gentlemen, for the analysis tonight. Comrade Ken of former is a veteran journalist and former vice president, Southeast Zone of the NUJ. Thank you so much for your analysis. Of course, Barrister Nadi Mofokansi is a constitutional lawyer and head of Fokansi Chambers. And he is also a farmer. Uh -huh. I know he was going to remind <laughs> me around that. Thank you so well, much as well. That. And that's the program for tonight here on the Eastern Eye. Join us tomorrow sometime. Up next is Anka with Rochelle. My name is Alex Obodo. Good night. Thank you.